ever, bought a new release, and then not read it for like a year after it's come out. Well, then this video is for you. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is another experimental vlog that we're gonna do together. So basically, I often buy new releases when they're hyped up and then I don't read them. It's pathetic. You are pathetic. I don't read them for like a year, two years <laughs> after they've come out and it's becoming a problem where I've got lots of books that I got last year, that were big last year that I haven't read. So what I thought would be fun to do, and also just cause I'm nosy and I like knowing this kind of thing, is I'm gonna find out what was booktube reading a year ago and I'm gonna read that. Now it might not be new releases from last year that everyone was reading, but I feel like statistically it's going to be. So I am gonna go back <laughs> through a lot of September wrap ups from 2020 I'm gonna write down what books are most popular, what books everyone is reading, and I'm gonna read those books. I don't know how this is gonna go, don't know how successful this is gonna be, <laughs> but that is what I'm gonna read in September, and then hopefully this video will be coming out towards the end of September-ish. I don't know what to expect, I don't know what books everyone's gonna be reading, I don't really have any predictions for books that I remember being popular, but I'm excited, I'm intrigued to see kind of what the trends are and what everyone is reading. So let's cut to Megan, doing the research and finding out what everyone was reading. So it's time for me to start the mammoth task of watching back people's <laughs> September wrap ups from last year and finding out what they were reading. I just don't know where to start. So I think I'm gonna aim to watch at least 40-ish, like I think 40 wrap ups is a good number to standardize and see if there's any books that stand out i mean i could spend all day doing this and then it turns out like there's <laughs> there's nothing like there's no books that everyone is reading but i think there must be so i'm gonna start with kayla aka books and lala because we have very similar reading tastes so let's see what the first book she mentions in her september wrap up is my favorite cover of the entire month that i read is A Song of Raised and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. Like what? Ooh! Okay, so okay, so that uh, that was like a release from last year, A Song of Raised and Ruin. I own it, which is good because listen, money, like if I can own some of these, that would be great. So if I got that, like if more people read that, I live, like that would be great. Fucking hell, Kayla read a lot of books in September. <laughs> Mina's video is titled The Month of Three Star Reads, so that doesn't bode well for me. <laughs> The first book that I read in September was Jade War by Fonda Lee. This is the sequel to Jade City. Let's quickly talk about Jade War, another one of my favorite reads of the month. Right, you guys. <laughs> this video idea is already a lot more time consuming than I anticipated. I've been working on this for five weeks. Do you see how many pages of notes we've done? <laughs> That is um, 16 booktubers, so <laughs> firstly, can I just say, can you bitches read less? Like, can you read less? Like, what is reading 20 books? Like, why, why have you got to do that to me? And secondly, can't you read more of the same books? <laughs> so we've only had a few that multiple people have read. So we have A Song of Race and Ruin, which Kayla read, and then who else read that? Oh, Sid read that. Sid read that. A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. I believe this is her debut novel and I'm super impressed by that. Then we've got Jade War by Fonda Lee, which if you remember, Mina, Nicole, and then Rue 
have all read that. So I feel like that's going to be a front runner. But with this book, I have to take breaks. I have to pause my audiobook or like close my book and just do breathing exercises because this book just freaks me out. I feel like I'm going to end up reading Jade City in this video, but we're going to continue on and it may change. Fuck me. We've also got The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, which is a long ass book. I don't see it for me, but okay. That was Becca and Reagan. The third book that I finished was The Way of Kings Part 1 by Brandon Sanderson. I was only able to get to page 200, which if you know the length of this book, it's not very far, but I'm still pleased with the 200 pages I read. Becca had only read, I think, the first half, because in the UK it's published as two books, and Reagan had only read the first 200 pages. So like, if, I mean, I don't want to read it, I'm hoping other things are going to surpass it in this time, but if I do have to read it, I'm only going to make myself read like the first half. And then I think that's the only books we've had duplicates of that I haven't read, yeah. That is the only duplicates we've had out of, I don't wanna know how many books. Should we, should we work this out? <laughs> Thirty-three ninety-nine. So I've written down the name of about 120 books, I would say. <laughs> and we've only had a few duplicates. So I'm very much hoping Way of Kings is gonna be <coughs> nixed. Don't wanna read that. But I'm up for reading Jade City. I own it and I'm interested in it. So I hope that still stays up there. We've also had one person read Jade City. I can't remember who that was, but I will put it in here. From there, I picked up another home run, a new all time fave, and that is Jade City by Fonda Lee. So we've currently had four for Jade City, I'm counting it as. But yeah, Way of Kings needs to fuck off. I don't wanna read that. So I think I'm gonna go away and get to 40 booktubers and then I'll come back and I'll tell you what we're actually gonna read in this video. So I've watched about 40 booktubers, <laughs> September wrap ups from last year, and there actually weren't that many duplicates. We didn't get many new duplicates. There were a few duplicates of books that I have read, but we're only talking about the books that I haven't read because that's the whole purpose of the video. Jade War slash Jade City still remain supreme with four people reading either of them. So we already talked about all of them. We had Mina, Nicole, Rue and Reagan reading Jade War or Jade City. So I am going to be reading Jade City in this log. I am excited to read it, but I'm also nervous because it's quite long. It's quite an in-depth fantasy that I didn't quite feel ready to start yet, especially when I've got like other in-depth fantasies that I'm reading. But hey-ho, we're going to start it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't cry, are you? Then next with three people reading it, a song of race and ruin. We're going to be reading this in this video. So we've already spoke about Kayla and Sid who read it in September, but also Natalie read it. I'll give this book uh, my favorite read of September. A song of race and ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. My first book that I actually sticky tabbed. This is another one I already owned before making this video. I read, I owned Jade City as well and I owned this. And I don't know much about this other than it's an African inspired fantasy. It's YA, it's a debut and I'm excited. I know we're following like two perspectives. I think a guy who is trying to save his sister and then the princess but the guy wants to kill the princess basically and then the third book we actually haven't spoken about yet it pulled through in that last round basically of me since i've been looking at more stuff since i last spoke to you we are going to be reading cemetery boys by aiden thomas so reagan read this this is a book that completely melted my heart turned me into a pile of goo and i loved every single second of it and that is cemetery boys by aiden thomas which i think is really interesting because obviously reagan one of the biggest booktubers. Reagan like pops up in two of these books and she also read Way of Kings which also got two votes so Reagan just has her finger on the pulse. Reagan knows what she's fucking doing. And also Ali and Mel read this. Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. Definitely a new favorite of mine. And I absolutely loved it. I gave it four to five stars. I thought it was an amazing debut novel. So I didn't own this before making this video. I just know it's about a trans boy who's trying to prove himself and his family and I I think a ghost, like, like someone ghost, but I'm really excited to read it. It was super popular around this time. It's another book that I kind of maybe could have predicted being on this list. So I am excited to give this a go too. So we've got lot, three fantasy books. <laughs> Booktube was reading a lot of fantasy at this time. Two that I already owned because I was interested in them and one that I hadn't but I'm excited. I don't know what to predict I'm gonna think of these books, but I'm excited to get into them and give them all a go. So I'm gonna start now with Jade City. Hello. <laughs> so I'm just about to pop out, but I wanted to let you know that I'm about 80 pages into Jade City 
and I'm really enjoying it. It's very much like this Godfather inspired fantasy where we have this really powerful family who's kind of in charge of everything and we've kind of just been getting to know all the different members of the family. We've got like two brothers and a sister that we've met so far and in this uh, country all the power is through jade. So you have these people, these ruling families that can harness the jade and it gives them like strength, like supernatural strength basically and people are always trying to steal jade, like people want the power that jade gives them and I'm just really enjoying it. Like it's been reading so easily, it's been so captivating and interesting. It's been a long time since I've read like a detailed layered fantasy like this. I haven't been reading a lot of fantasy at all the past couple months and this just feels like the perfect thing to be reading. Like I, I generally can't remember the last time I read fantasy. I don't remember, I don't remember love, I don't remember at all. I really don't, it was an awful long time ago. And I think I've been reading a lot of like YA fantasy and I've been missing a bit of like adult gritty, really in-depth fantasy. I really like the characters so far. I think they've all got very interesting dynamics, like familial dynamics. Yeah, really dramatic action. The world building is so well done. It's not info dumpy, but it's really well done. Yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. Good morning. I just had to get ready. I'm just doing my makeup whilst we're talking. And I realized I want to listen to more of the audiobook whilst I get ready. So I thought, let's check in now so that I can listen to some more of the audiobook. Oh, I didn't spray my face. Hold up. I'm enjoying J City. I am really enjoying it. The one thing is that it is like a long book. <laughs> It's not for me, Mark. I'm, I feel terribly ill all of a sudden. I don't think I've read a book this long in a hot second. I do tend to read shorter bits, I feel like, nowadays. So I am struggling a bit with the length of it, I'm not gonna lie to you. It is long, and I've got the audiobook, and I'm like, holy shit, I cannot remember the last time I spent this long reading a book. <laughs> I think I'm on page 295. I'm really enjoying like all the familial relationships in it. I think the politics is very satisfying, but I can't really make my mind up on how I feel about it. I keep switching between, oh my God, I'm really enjoying this and oh my God, I'm bored. <laughs> I've been reading fantasy full stop the past couple months. So I think it's just a bit of a different reading experience there's times where we get like super into kind of the law and the world building and the politics that's just quite repetitive like that happens quite a lot by the way i look crazy when i just got my foundation on i probably should have spoken to you once i had my foundation and concealer already on but hey ho yeah there's quite a lot of sections where we'll just be talking for ages about the way that this like maybe familial dynamics work or the society works or the world works and stuff like that and I'm just like, okay, let's just get on with this, the story. Can we speed things up a little bit? Can we speed things up a little bit? Should we speed it up a little bit? Yeah. Hang on, I'm just gonna like finish my foundation and then talk to you again. Oh, but something did just happen that was so shocking. Like I was gagged, I was gooped, I was shook. I did not expect that to happen. And I, I'm thinking to myself, if this was like a simpler fantasy, right? Like maybe a YA fantasy, or if it was just a bit more like simple, that would have been the end of the book. Like the book would have finished there and we would have gotten into the repercussions of that happening in the next book but it hasn't, it's just like happened randomly in the middle of the book. And so I feel like that's a sign of what a good like series this is going to be and what a complex series this is gonna be and how it constantly keeps you on your toes. Like I was starting to get a bit complacent and then that happened and I was like, holy oh, shit. shit. <laughs> I'm kind of sad it happened without spoilers. Like I didn't want the story to go in that way, but like I kind of understand that it may be a bit better for this the story to go in that way um but i'm kind of annoyed that it happened but i think it is interesting that it happened so out the blue and like in the middle of the book um and i just feel like this book could be shorter <laughs> i'm gonna go listen to more of the audiobook and then i'll come back to you once i've actually finished it All right, it's time. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about this book. 
I was not expecting that. Here's the thing. The reason I don't want to talk about it, it's not all bad things. Don't think bad. I'm, I just want to preface it by saying, I think, <laughs> I think I'm going to give this a 3.5, rounded up to four on Goodreads. So you think, okay, that's fine. But I wanted to love this even more. And the biggest problem is I cannot put my finger on why I was a bit disappointed by it. I can't put my finger on why it's not getting a four or a 4.5 or a five because I was going and looking at reviews, right? And I saw my friend Mina's review and she's one of the biggest reasons that I picked this book up, that I wanted to read this book. And I was reading her review and I agree in principle with everything she's said. There's just a little something, a little, Je ne sais quoi. that wasn't it for me that meant I wasn't fully drawn in that I wasn't fully excited to read the book let me find Mina's review the cool family have stolen every bit of my heart and their dynamic had me close to tears many times the world building is rich full of politics magic theology and culture the plot and pacing are exceptional and I found myself shocked at every turn do I agree with every aspect of that yes I do. I think objectively this is a masterfully done book. I loved the politics. I love when there's a good amount of politics in my fantasy. I feel like when Hilo or Lan or Shay, the, the siblings, got talking about the politics and the kind of the strategic decisions that they were making and why they were doing that, I was like, oh my god, they're so clever and, and the politics as well has been so well thought out. But it didn't, I didn't, I wasn't excited to read the book. Oh my god, T Central over here. And I didn't feel fully drawn in and I didn't feel any kind of special way about it. But there were points that I love, I don't know, I have a very mixed feeling about it. I feel like I went through a lot of peaks and troughs in my enjoyment of it. But at the same time, there aren't any points I can remember where I'm like, that bit wasn't good or that bit was good. Usually, if I'm a bit disappointed by a book, I can give you a fucking 5,000 word essay on it right like why it wasn't it why it was a bit off why it wasn't what I was expecting this I'm speechless <laughs> but I enjoyed it I loved the audiobook the audiobook was really good I'm definitely going to continue on with this series eventually I need to like plow through some series we may do that in November or December <laughs> maybe it would be fun actually to get you guys to vote on which series maybe I'll do that in a vlog which series you would like me to make progress in so maybe you vote for this maybe you won't who knows it was it was okay I enjoyed it but it wasn't outstanding. The other day I went and I stocked up on some candles. Hang on, let me get the other one because I was just burning it. I love this brand Woodwick candle. I feel like they burn so much more evenly than Yankee candle because it's a very soft wax. I got vanilla bean from Woodwick candle. Look at her, isn't she just like cute? It's but just she's beautiful. <laughs> right. I was burnt, I just started burning this. It took me back to when I obviously had another vanilla -y candle i think the one i had then was a yankee candle and it was like vanilla cupcake or something but it smells pretty much the same and like i don't know you know when you burn a candle scent that you haven't burnt in a long time it took me back to being like 15 and like being really productive and working and i feel like it got me into like the right like worky vibe today and then i also got because my, my other favorite scent is caramel and usually i had their i've just finished their salted caramel one but this is caramel toasted sesame and it's really nice because it's like caramel but with like a bit more like earthiness or spiciness to it. Oh, I'm very excited to burn this one. So I treated myself, what can I say? But I love a good candle. So now, I should have got this when I got up to get the candles. I am going to read Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. Obviously another book that a lot of people were reading last year. This is obviously the one in the vlog I didn't already own. So I'm intrigued to see how this one goes and if I maybe prefer it to the ones or don't because I wasn't as interested in it beforehand. Lit up a fire, let everyone know the sooner the better they all want to go. We dance till the morning, we we'll dance till we drop. When morning starts rising, we leave them with all that is ours. And down by the water, we set them all free. Okay, 
Okay, listen up everyone, I am tired. <laughs> I'm reading a sandwich, you boys. I'm about 120 pages in. I did want to get a little bit further in before I spoke to you, but hey ho, a bitch is gonna turn the lights off. Hit the lights, the music, the music, the music. Stop, okay. I'm enjoying it, kind of. We've got, I can't remember names, I'm so tired. We've got one um, boy who comes from this family of brujos and he is a trans boy and so he wants to be recognized in the role that the men typically have in the family uh, but they want him to fulfill the role that women typically fulfill in the family there's a lot of like misgendering and stuff that he is suffering within his own family and he meets this ghost of like a local troublemaker boy who's just been killed and they're trying to help that boy figure out how he died what is happening i'm enjoying it but also i'm i don't feel like much has happened yet like i don't feel like much has happened like barely anything's happened like i want us to get it moving a bit it's a little bit slow paced a little bit character focused shall we say for me i'm not necessarily a character focused gal if we're honest if we're honest with ourselves people who read for character development watching this the cheek the nerve the gall the audacity and the gumption I like all the characters, but like just nothing is happening. And that's like all of my critique for you. I have nothing else to say. I like that I'm reading from a trans author, trans rep, but I also feel like, I don't know if I'm vibing with YA at this current moment. Like, I, I feel like increasingly with YA, it has to be amazing for me to vibe. Some of my favorite books ever are YA. We know that. I read like a lot of YA, like read 50-50. But what book did I have this trouble with lately? Oh, Ace of Spades. Everyone else fucking loves this. I really struggle to get into it and I cry myself to sleep every night thinking about it. This read so young to me and I just couldn't get into it. And I'm feeling a li little, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I'm feeling like that to a lesser extent with this. Like a little bit just discombobulated, not sure if we're, Bezzy mates. But it is reading fast, which I shall say that I appreciate. I don't have a problem with the quality of the book at all. The book is probably a five-star book for so many people. It is a five-star book for so many people. And I can see it. But it's, do you know when a book and you just aren't like Bezzy mates? You know what I mean? All right. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. <laughs> I've finished Cemetery Boys. I've finished Cemetery Boys and I didn't love it. I, <laughs> I'm gonna give it three stars. I'm gonna give it three stars. Here's the thing. Here's the situation. I, <laughs> we'll speak about this more and again in a second, but I'm, I'm feeling a bit disconnected from YA at the moment. And I don't know why, because I never have a problem with YA. And it's not a problem I have with, I'm having with middle grade, but something about the way that YA is written, I'm not like vibing with it. Like it just, this read to me, I think if you removed the swearing from it, it didn't read as the YA I enjoy. I think this is like YA for like 10 to 13 year olds rather than YA for like 14 to 16 year olds, which I think is the YA I tend to prefer. I wanna say none of my negatives about this book are about the uh, Latinx trans gay representation. I thought that was all handled amazingly. Basically the premise of this is, is a romance between this, this guy and a ghost, right? And I never let myself become attached to that relationship or invested or care about it at all because it was temporary right like this guy is dead regardless of of how the book progresses early on i was like this ain't going nowhere it's a temporary thing and i couldn't i couldn't let myself get attached to it in any way one of my biggest problems with this book was the ending i think if the ending had been better it would have been like a 3.5 but the villain Girl. The villain, the villain in this was so predictable, so predictable. I literally, I was reading it in, the, I was reading this around Tom's, and I literally closed the book. I went, <sighs> I was angry. I was angry. You know when a villain is so obvious, 
so obvious but you also feel like it hasn't been set up well enough it was like a combination of those two and i also just felt like personally the villain never reached their full potential like it was kind of like the romance took over so much of the plot and i don't like when this happens in in you know fantasy the romance took over so much of the plot that the kind of the the actiony plot side of it was kind of rushed towards the end so i just felt like the villain I wanted more and I also didn't want it to be you because it was obvious was my kind of feelings I will read more of Aiden Thomas's stuff we were talking about this actually in my patron discord and we were talking about authors who we see the potential for them to be a five star read and I was saying how I had that with Mona Award so I am going to read All's Well eventually because I didn't love Bunny but I saw the potential for Mona Award to be a favourite author I feel the same way with Aiden Thomas and if, and someone else was saying that in the Patreon as well I see the potential with this author for them to be an all-time favourite author for me but something about this book just didn't work for me we didn't vibe and it also may just be my disconnect from YA at the moment speaking of I am actually already <laughs> halfway through a song of Wraiths and Ruin. I was round Tom's and I forgot to bring my camera so I, I couldn't film but I could read because I remembered to bring my books. I am on page 220. Again I'm enjoying it but I'm feeling a disconnect. Maybe I need to be a bit more selective with the YA fantasy series I'm picking up or just fantasy YA fantasy in general because I think I'm becoming a little bit more picky about what I want and I think I'm tending to prefer like older YA but I am still enjoying this. I'm listening to the audiobook as well and I am enjoying it. So in this we're following Malik and Karina. Karina is the princess of this of this land and Malik is this kind of refugee who wants to kill her. <laughs> to self, save his sister. He's made this deal, his sister's in trouble, his little sister, and he has to kill the princess in order to fulfill that. And Karina, also without really knowing it, has intentions for him as well. He gets into this contest and she offers her hand in marriage to the winner of the contest so that she can then kill that person to revive her, her dead mother. I didn't know any of that going into synopsis. I didn't really know anything, but it is in the synopsis, so I can tell you. And I'm enjoying it. I think the world building is very rich. I think our two main characters have such unique voices. Like they're really, they're really vivid characters to me, our two main characters. I think all the characters in the book are really good. I think the plot is moving along at a really great pace. It doesn't feel rushed, but it doesn't feel like I felt with this one sometimes it felt slow like oh nothing's happening it doesn't feel like that with this something is always moving the plot on really really well but I am just not personally loving it there I said it we all survived didn't we right like this is a problem I'm having a lot in this vlog so sorry it's been a bit one note like I kind of felt like it with Jade City as well where I'm reading books I can recognize that they're good like they're really really good books but I'm just not personally like obsessed so that is the issue. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I really love the main characters. It's got great action. I This doesn't feel like a debut to me, whereas this kind of did. This doesn't feel like a debut. It's got really rich action, rich world building, so many layers. It doesn't feel like exposition-y at all, which I think, again, I felt a bit with Cemetery Boys. It doesn't feel like over-explained. So it's great. Like it's a, it's a really good book. I think it will probably end up being like a 3.5. I'm just not loving the reading experience. I am just kind of having to make myself finish it, which is strange. I don't know why I'm in this kind of headspace at the moment with fantasy. I am going to go finish this today. I've only got a couple hours left of the audiobook, so I'm going to kind of do both. Your glowing eyes glitter like the stars by the sea. We all come from somewhere. We all have a doubt. We're chasing perfection but we'll never figure it out but somehow we lost it all okay <laughs> whoa <laughs> so i finished the song of race and ruin and i'm gonna give it four stars i really really enjoyed this yes <laughs> yes something about this in the last like 50-ish pages really clicked for me. I found the majority of how it ended really satisfying. I just want to say also, I read this book in less than 24 hours, pretty much, like most of it. I think I'd read the first 60 pages a couple days ago, but then the rest of it I had read in the last 24 hours and it just flew by. Considering the rest of this video took me like 20 years to make <laughs> and I had to push this video back like twice, this was like a marvel. I just 
flew through it and it's long it's you know it's over 450 pages i loved the west african inspired folklore to it I loved the dynamic between our two main characters. I loved that it ended in a way that was very unpredictable in that I really don't know where the second book in this series is gonna go, like where we're even gonna start. Like I feel like the next book could start in a couple years time onwards and I find that always really, really exciting when, when books end in a way that means the next book in the series is unpredictable and I really don't know what I'm going to be picking up. I do just want to say I had the same problem in Cemetery Boys in that I called the villain and I didn't, you know, I felt like it was obvious, you know? I want you to trick me with your villain. If that is a reveal, if it's not something we know throughout, if the villain is a reveal, I want you to trick me with it somehow. That's very important to me. And again, I just feel like, I know, I called it like, 200 pages in. I felt like it was really, really obvious and it, I was a bit disappointed by that. The pacing was incredible for how fast I read it. I really loved all the family dynamics in this. I think our characters are really fun. You know, our girl, our main, our main character who's the princess is like very like headstrong. She's got a lot of walls up. She knows what she wants. She knows what she wants to achieve. And then our other main character, he's very soft and like gentle. And there's a lot of like anxiety and uh, panic attack representation through him. And I I think just by the end of it, do you ever have a book where you're like, by the end, you appreciate it even more being able to look back and see the path of the book? Like, when I look back, I look back on the book with like rose tinted glasses, even though I like, I've only just finished the book. Does that make sense? I don't know. We're back on, we're back on my appreciation of YA fantasy. <laughs> I was a bit worried. For a while I was thinking this was going to be like a 3.5 but it, it upped itself to a, like a solid solid 4 and um, I'm really excited to read the second one in the series. It comes out in November and I'm really excited to read it. Probably won't read it straight away, probably won't read it for a while <laughs> but I am excited to read it when it comes out and yeah I just thought it had so many twists and turns. I really could never predict where this story was going so thank you for watching this vlog. I'm sorry you know for a while there was a bit monotonous like 3.5, 3.5 for I did feel similarly about a lot of the books but I really loved this video concept I would love to do it again if it's something you guys would want um it was so interesting to go back in time a year and see what was popular on booktube and see that I already owned two of the books because my assumptions were correct in that I was buying these books and then not reading them and it was really fun to read them and to kind of like feel like it was a year ago all of a sudden. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed doing this vlog. If you've gotten to the end of the video, comment the green heart emoji for this gorgeous green gown. <laughs> Let me know what kind of books you read last September. Maybe go on whatever kind of book tracking thing you, you have and let me know what books you were reading last September. And thank you so much for watching as always. I hope you had a good time and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.